Welcome to module five, checks and inspection. Planned program of checks, inspection and maintenance. This is very important that we have one of these in place. INDG 455, which we've been talking about, requires pre-use checks and detailed visual inspections. I've done a recording there on the left-hand side that I'm going to show you because this can be a big discussion point on site. So I just want you to know exactly where you can find that within this document. Here we go. A lot of debate happens over the inspections and pre-use and detailed visual inspections of ladders. So I just want to show you INDG 455, safe use of ladders and step ladders, so that you know after doing this course where you can find the information that's going to be contained in the remainder of this module. So it's on the last page, page six. We'll go through it quickly. What about the condition of the equipment? Employers need to make sure that any ladder or step ladder is both suitable for the work task and is in a safe condition. As a guide, we should only be using ladders that have no visible defects. They should have a pre-use check each and every working day. They should also have an up-to-date record of the detailed visual inspection carried out regularly by a competent person. These should be done in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions and any ladders that are part of a scaffold system still have to be inspected every seven days as part of the scaffold inspection requirements. A detailed visual inspection is similar to a pre-use check in that it is used to spot defects. It can be done in-house by competent persons. Pre-use checks should be part of the user's training and detailed visual inspections should be recorded. So now we're going to continue the module. I just want to show you where you can find this information. That's INDG 455. User checks. Ladders require a pre-use check each working day and must have no visible defects. Those pre-use checks, they really do save lives. If you imagine start the start of a week on a construction site or in an engineering factory and there's multiple people using the same ladder, then it could get damaged at the start of the day, it could get damaged on the way home in the lorry, it could, in the truck, it could get damaged. So before you use it, please check the ladders. And employees need to know how to do pre-user checks because it should be part of their training. So if we audit, when we um, undertake our audits or our inspections on companies, if they cannot evidence documented training on ladders, then we will identify it. And then it's up to the organisation to state how they have deemed individuals' users' competence. Ladders that are part of the scaffold system, as we just said, they must be inspected every seven days as part of the requirements on that um, for scaffolds, a specific ad hoc repairs must not be permitted. detailed visual inspections. This legal requirement we've mentioned in previous modules and the provision and use of work equipment regulations 1998. And although that law and the wider laws do not say how often, then they must be done regularly. So that's going to be determined by risk assessment, which will be determined by the environment and the use of the ladders. If you're in an office environment, it's a big difference compared to being on a construction site when you're out amongst the elements. Site and employee requirements, they will differ, but the inspections must be thorough and recorded as noted there. Some methods are ladder tags. They can be used to identify the ladder has been inspected and is safe to use. You do see that quite uh, regularly. It is a good visual way of checking. If we're doing these checks, then we must be competent in doing detailed visual inspections in terms of skills, knowledge and experience to inspect ladders. Everybody must be doing a pre-use check. That should be in the training. And certain individuals will be uh, named, named individuals to undertake the detailed visual inspections. What those visual inspections entail is now going to be contained in the, in the rest of the module. So inspectors in general 
obviously all ladders must be free from any damaging corrosion. Corrosion is going to eat into the integrity of the ladder. An excessive wear, that's what we're looking for. Feet, any end of, end of styles, etc. And no distortion to any part of the ladder. You will see this as we go through each part of ladders. You will notice it's the same theme. We shouldn't be undertaking ad hoc repairs. Ladders can be repaired, but just not on an ad hoc basis. It must be done formally. And then the ladder should then be signed off before it comes back into regular use. Ladders that fail inspection should be secured. So get them out of use. Label do not use. Do not allow anybody to use them and report to the person in charge of the work area. Records, we're going to need to write this down. So, again, we must be competent to undertake inspections. An inspection sheet like the one on the left-hand side does give us all the areas to check. It is beneficial. You can download that at the start of the course. Recording our findings. So it's documented. I'm posing this question. What is the document retention process for your organisation? Imagine you undertake your ladder inspections, you keep them for a month, and then two years, coming up to three years after that, you receive a civil claim from somebody who fell off a ladder and said the ladder was faulty. Think about how long you're going to retain your documentation. We're now going to go through the various parts of ladders, and they're going to be very similar, what we're checking for. We're starting with feet, the tips, and the end caps. They've got all got to be present. They've got to be the correct ones, of course. Any style ends, yeah, must be undamaged. The end of the styles, you can see there you've got the caps on the end, it must be undamaged. Any rivets and any other fixings must be present and secure. It's a very good example on the right hand side. No distortion, no cracks, cuts or holes. That's going to be the same for any part of the ladder. And any anti slip ground contact surfaces should be undamaged and effective. So we can see the anti-slip on the end caps there. They should be sufficiently clean and free from dirt, mud, paint, oil and grease. Well, we can see the end of this ladder here is this uh, leaning ladder. It's in not in a good condition. Get it out of use. Get it um, put to one side. Get it labelled and tell everybody not to use it. It's going to be the same for any braces or any cross tubes as we can see here. No excessive bending or bowing. No significant bending, folding or creasing. We are inspecting that bar along its length. No twisting. Any rivets or any other fixing should be present and secure. No creases, cracks, cuts or holes. Give it a good check. Clean any mud off. There shouldn't be any on there, but clean it off so we can check properly. No significant denting. So minor dents may be acceptable. Again, if you find this when you're doing your inspection, ensure you report it. Let somebody else make that decision. Braces and cross tubes. No significant corrosion of components that might compromise their strength and effectiveness. No rotation. On the one on the right hand side, we can see some rivets. A rivet is missing. No, not split or any otherwise damaged. Any other fixings? So we can see here, check the condition. No severe corrosion or wear. They must be tight. All fixings that include screws, bolts and rivets must be in place. You can see the rivet there. It's in good condition. Check there are no missing fixings. Look, feel for telltale holes where fixings may have been. Again, clean the ladder if need be. Check the ladder around each fixing for wear and signs of damage. So there we can see damage. Take it out of commission. Platforms, we're going to be, there should be no significant bending of upper surface. Yeah, no dishing, no folding or twisting. Make sure it is in good condition. No creases, cracks, cuts or holes. No significant denting that might compromise its strength. Any support bars or other attachments, again, undamaged and secure. And any linking mechanism present should be secure. So we can see there we have some cracks on the platform. We need to take that out of commission. Make sure they open and close satisfactorily with no excessive play or force. Any anti-slip platform, the surface should be undamaged and effective. Sufficiently clean and free from dirt, mud, paint, oil and grease. 
That can mask any damage underneath, so make sure the ladders are clean. Onto the rungs and treads. All present and secure within Styles ladder sections. No splits, bends, bows or twists, creases, cracks, cuts or holes or any significant denting. The anti-slip surface, again undamaged and must ensure it's effective. Any rivets or any other fixings, again present and secure. Sufficiently clean and free from paint, plaster and any other contaminants. We can see there the dented rung that needs to come out of commission. Onto the styles and frames and much more the same, not bent, twisted or bowed. Front to rear frame attachment and the hinging needs to be secure. Rivets, other fixings, it should be present and secure with no creases, cracks, cuts or holes. No significant denting, it's the same theme. No significant corrosion of the components. We're basically going through the ladder with a fine tooth comb inch by inch. Styles and frames. This is down the side of the ladder, the styles and the frames. Any stops and other safety restraint devices should be present, secure and and damage. We can see damage on the one on the right. That needs to come out of commission. Any stabilizers where required and fitted should be present, secure and also undamaged. Onto the catches and any hooks. So we should be checking that they're in place, they're tight, and there's no distortion of the styles where the catches are attached. So really look closely. They should not be bent, twisted or corroded. We need to check that they lock and they unlock correctly. Again, we're looking for significant corrosion and they should fit positively onto the rungs. We can see there that's not fitting. Again, that is damaged. That needs to come out of commission. Restraint devices. So we can see the restraint device there in between the styles. No excessive bending or bowing. They should be open and close. They should open and close satisfactorily with no excessive play or force. Any rivets or any other fixings present, they need to be secure. No cracks, cuts, holes or fraying in any webbing. So we can see the webbing there. We can see that's come away. Again, we need to get that out of service. So they should all be present and secure. No displacement or looseness in restraint devices. No bending, cracks, cuts or holes. All rivets and other fixings present and secure. It is a common theme across each and every part of the ladder and across any ladder. No significant corrosion of components that might compromise their strength and effectiveness. So there we can see... See that damaged, that needs to come out of commission. Have a look at the manufacturer's instructions for the ladder. If they don't have them, then you really should be looking online to find them. On to the labels, they need to be attached and legible. So we can see there's damage on the right hand side there. There could be good instructions on there. We need to make sure they're attached and legible. So the detailed visual inspections are really important. The person doing them needs to be competent. The pre-use check is before use each and every time, at least each and every day. Make sure we do the pre-use checks. Detailed visual inspections are going to come as part of the risk assessment. That's going to determine who does it. They have to be competent. So the key message from this final module is that ladders must be checked before use and regularly inspected. There is a difference to ensure that they are in a safe condition. Users of ladders should be provided training on pre-use checks as part of their ladder training. And also like this course, we're now covering the detailed visual inspections as well. There are courses out there that can last all day. They're fine to go on as well. We have followed the HSE guidance with this training. Key points. Remember this, they're in yellow, so they may come up in the questions. Pre-use checks, they should be conducted every working day. Detailed vision in, visual inspections under the provision of use of work equipment regulations must be carried out by a competent person. Again, deemed when, that should be in your health and safety policy in your arrangement section, because organizations are different depending on the environment. Frequency of these, they vary due to risk assessment, like just said, 
and any records of inspections should be available to provide the HSE if they do um, be involved due to an accident or if you've had a, a personal injury claim. Those will be requested as well. How long are you going to keep them for? Think about that document retention. Ladders that are part of a scaffold system must be checked before use and inspected every seven days. What are we going to cover? What did we just cover? We're doing our inspections. We are looking at the feet, the tips, the end caps. We're looking at the braces and the cross tubes, fixings, platforms and rungs, treads. We're looking at just about absolutely everything. Styles, frames, catches, hooks, any restraint devices, and any labels, they need to be present and legible. The ladder themselves, clean and free from contaminants. We don't want contaminants corroding the ladder. No splits, holes, bends, bulges, or significant denting. All rivets must be present and secure, and the ladder must operate easily and uh, operates easily and secures in position safely. This is the general inspections. All locking devices must operate sufficiently. We can't have any missing parts, obviously. Free from damaging corrosion, excessive wear, no distortion, no ad hoc repairs. Ladders that fail an inspection must be secured to prevent use and labelled do not use. So that is the end of module five. We've covered pre-use, and we've covered detailed visual inspections. For me, this is so important, something very often missing, missing on site, more often than not, unfortunately. So I hope you enjoyed that model. I think that module is a really important one. So now look forward to the questions for module five, which will be the last questions of this course. Thank you very much.